Hi, and welcome to Design for Life, week number two. This week, we're going to look at experiences in life and how God uses experiences to do His will in us and through us. And the passage that we read this week was in Joshua chapter 2, uh, the first 21 verses. And it's the story of Rahab. Now, who was Rahab? Rahab was not a Jew. She was a Gentile, somebody who lived in the land that the Jews were going in to occupy. And she actually lived in the city of Jericho, one of the cities that God said he was going to give to the Israelites, a place that was described by God as full of unbelievers. And God was going to actually destroy that city and everybody in it. And that's where Rahab lived. And not only did she live in the wrong city at the wrong time, but we find that Rahab was a prostitute. We don't know why she was a prostitute. We don't know how she ended up in that life. But what we know is she was in a very lowly position. This is not something any of us would go, hey, I'd like to switch places with Rahab. And yet there she is, exactly where God needs her to do something phenomenal. What do we know about Rahab's life and the life of a prostitute? Well, here's a few things that we know. First of all, we know she was despised by the good people in her city. She was looked down on. She didn't have a place of standing. Uh, We also know that, uh, you know, she probably ran with a pretty rough crowd. She was probably pretty good at telling a lie. Uh, We know she lived on the outer wall. And we know because she lived on the outer wall, that was not something anybody aspired to. If there was an attack on the city and you lived on the outer wall, you were in the most vulnerable part of the city. And so we find Rahab, the prostitute, in an unenviable place. And it's that exact place where God chooses to use her because he sends some spies into the city. Some of the Jewish folks who are about to go and come into the promised land and do the will of God and, you know, take over this city eventually. They come in to spy out the city. And as they're doing that, they get detected. And so the guards start looking for these two spies that are somewhere in the city. And they find their way to, of all people, Rahab. And that's where she enters the story. Rahab not only knows that they're spies, but she chooses to hide the spies from the guards, from her own people. Now, why would she do that? Well, again, we understand that she was somebody who was on the outside of society. She was somebody that was despised and looked down on. She was perfectly primed to be the kind of person who would say, you know what, I'm not going to stand up for my people, my country. I'm going to stand up for these guys. And so she made a decision. It could have cost her her life. But she chose to hide the spies. And not only did she choose to hide them, when the guards came and knocked on her door, she tells them, I haven't seen them. And they're hiding in her house. She was a good liar. And then on top of all of that, she's able to get them away by lowering them down from the window in her house. Had she not lived on the outside of the city, she would have never been able to do that. And as we begin to understand this story, we understand that God superintended He had a plan, and he executes his plan to use a person that we say, how could you use her? Why would you use her? She was perfectly positioned to do the will of God. She saves the lives of these two spies. She protects them. And she asks only in return that they would remember her. And in fact, they do. And what we can learn from this week's lesson is that God uses all of the experiences of life, not just the pretty, comfortable, nice ones, but he uses everything. We read in Romans 8, 28, God works all things together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And here he uses even the broken stuff in Rahab's life to do good. What part of your broken story is God going to use for good? God makes beautiful things out of brokenness. And what we see at the end of the story is that Rahab actually becomes the mother of Boaz after God saves her from Jericho's walls falling down. She's the only one who survives out of this massive city. After God saves her, she marries and gives birth to a baby boy, and she names him Boaz. And Boaz, of course, grows up, as we discovered last week, to marry Ruth. Ruth becomes the, uh, the wife of Boaz, and then they have kids, and eventually... Uh, Ruth becomes the great-grandmother of King David, one of the greatest in all of the history of the Jewish tradition of kings. And not only that, but God gives a promise to David because he's pleased with King David. And he says, out of your line, out of your offspring, a savior will be born, which we know from the book of Matthew is the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ himself, our savior, finds his lineage all the way back in the brokenness of a prostitute named Rahab. 
God uses brokenness to do good. And that should encourage us. As we look at our life experiences, even the broken things in our life, God can raise those up and use them for good. I hope you're encouraged this week.